So we're going to shift gears a little bit, and I want to invite Tiffany up. Um, Tiffany is an incredible community partner, and she's going to tell you a little bit about her community. But what I thought would be interesting and helpful is to not just talk about the what, like what does a bike lane look like or what does a bus lane look like, but who. These projects are successful because of the community. So Tiffany is going to share a little bit about why Codman Square was the right place to pilot the neighborhood slow zones in the city of Boston. Good evening, everyone. So, I'm Tiffany. Can everyone hear me? All right. So, I'm from TNT. That's Talbot Norfolk Triangle. And we are a very small neighborhood located in Codman Square. And here is what we look like. And these are some of the statistics that describe what our neighborhood is represents and looks like. And if you start from the top and go down, some of those statistics may not be very positive. But when you look at our, our community as a whole, you see that we're, as we call it, very lit. And we have a lot of resources and talents within our neighborhood. And the last one I saved, we are Boston's first and only, only uh, eco-innovation district. So this is a representation of how we roll in our neighborhood. <laughs> Slow rolls and we get veggie people from neighboring um, communities, our sister HCC community of Mattapan Food and Fitness. Um, this was a part of the Healthy Community Champion Program. It helped us to align what we wanted to implement in our neighborhood, which were slower streets. It helped us to bring an awareness of what was active transportation and how would we engage neighbors for them to take ownership of that implementation uh, and that dream of making our, sa our streets safer and open up a space for them to be able to feel comfortable in expressing their viewpoints their concerns, but also what they thought were good solutions for the problem. After all, they live there, so they're the experts in the neighborhood. Listening to neighbors. So what were the challenges of our neighborhood as seen by neighbors? And that's something that is very important when we're talking about converging into people's neighborhoods, especially neighborhoods that are considered to be underserved or under-resourced. Those two words, um, not very positive terms, but what we choose to describe neighborhoods like ours because there is a lack of resources and there is a lack of knowledge about infrastructure and the different processes in order to make neighborhoods better. So this is a little bit of what we do. We get bikes fixed. We have dental vans come into our neighborhood and check the kids' teeth out. And as a reward, we have them get a free bike. And we fit them with helmets and bike lights and all the doodads that go along with the bike to make it really awesome and cool. We work with the Fairmont Greenway Task Force. Our neighborhood is a part of that. We sit on that task force. And we were able to engage neighbors to put the first mural in Dorchester, and all of Boston actually, in front of Elmhurst Park. So that's a mural on Elmhurst Street. It kind of anchors the park, but it also, hopefully, uh, what we were really hoping, and it actually did work out, was a traffic calming measure. It beautified the area, it anchored Elmhurst Park. That's actually also where we have a free drop-in uh, community uh, camp for young children in the, in the neighborhood every single day in the summertime for free. Parents don't have to register, they just drop them off, sign them up, and peace, they get to go. So our neighborhood was really grateful and excited to be chosen for this pilot for the slow streets. Um, it didn't just happen overnight. We had a history of being engaged of listening to neighbors, knowing our neighbors, 
not many neighborhoods that look like ours and have the challenges that our neighborhood has knows a neighbor. I know my neighbor's email, I can text them, I can knock on their door, they can come ask me for a cup of sugar, or because I like to cook, what are you cooking? Feed me and my family. And, and that's a wonderful thing. But when you have a, neighbor that's, a neighborhood that is so connected, it's easier to get people involved and say, come out, let's figure out where a speed bump should be. And let's learn about what a chicane is and daylighting. And let's talk about the fact that maybe there won't be so many extra parking spaces, but what we're gonna get in return. This was last year, our little neighborhood won the Golden Shoe Award from Walk Boston. And all of the neighbors engaged. And that's Paul Malcolm, it's a quote from Paul Malcolm. He is the uh, executive director for the Boston Project. Um, it's a um, neighborhood ministry that really stewards change in our neighborhood. And of course, talking about slow streets and the need for slow streets, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about why neighborhoods like ours need slow streets. So I'm sure you can see the ghost spike there. Unfortunately, our neighborhood is one of those neighborhoods that have the least amount of infrastructure changes until we were able to have slow streets come in um, and the city work with us to get these changes made. Our neighborhood is used as a cut through. People speed, people don't pay attention to the rules of the road, people are not listening or watching out for children. We have the most children in our neighborhood per household than any other neighborhood in Boston. There are always children crossing the street, playing in the street, and so unfortunately there are a lot of traffic crashes. Um, and so this is the need for slow streets. So I just wanted to really have us really think about that and understand that this program is going to save many lives. It's going to allow people to feel safer on their block, to be able to actually even start to think about, maybe I'll go for a walk, or maybe I'll allow my kids to play outside or cross the street to get to the park, or think about riding a bike. So, thank you. <laughs>